God, y'all. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to be before you long. And it's been a while since I've been in the pulpit. It's been about three weeks now. And I am nervous, like as always, like I'm about to do a trial sermon. Every time I come up and talk to God, I get nervous. Amen. Amen. Because I know it's not me. I know it's him. Amen. And I depend, I rely on him for what he wants to minister to the people. So let us pray. Fathers, in Jesus' name, we come, Lord, we thank you, we honor you. And Lord, we thank you for your, your wisdom, your grace, your blessing. Lord, I acknowledge you that this is a great congregation, that this is your ability and not mine, so this anointing it shall be used to destroy the yokes and move burdens. The Lord shall be given to you untouched in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you that the Spirit of God rests upon you, the Spirit of wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Lord, I thank you, Father God, for the grace of God that you've given us, Lord God, to become that what and who Jesus is already right now in the glory of heaven. And therefore, Father, I decree right now that you place in my mouth the words of prosperity for your people to experience immediate and radical increase. And I thank you, Lord God, you gave me this anointing to preach the gospel to the poor. You sent me here to broken hearted, to preach the liberty of the captives, cover sight to the blind, and preach the of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. But if you have your Bibles or your mobile device in your hand, come on, lift them up high, repeat after me, and say, This is my Bible. This is my Bible. Say, This is my word of God. I said, it's the living word of God. I said, it brings life to me. He said, I can do what it says I can do. And I can be who it says I can be. And I can have what it says I can have. I said, my life is better. I've gone heard, spoken, and practiced this word of God. And I say, devil, you are too late because we are believers. Amen, amen. This is what I'm going to talk to you um, for a moment about the passion of the kindness of Christ. Amen. The passion of the kindness of Christ. And I'm going to start here in Isaiah 43 and verse 11. And it's vital for us to realize that God had to love us with an amazing love to do all that he has done for us. You know, considering the fact we've been through this pandemic and, you know, some, we're still kind of like in it just a little bit, but notice how God was taking good care of us. Yeah. No matter what trouble came our way, God still took care of us. Amen. Amen. He fed us. He protected us. Yeah. We had money. Yeah. I mean, we're going to probably get a fourth stimulus check. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> and all the things that God is doing for us, there's nothing on this earth that can happen that can stop God from being good to us. Now, God has a passion towards us, but also we have to regenerate our passion towards him. Because when you go through trials or the woes of this world, it can kind of hinder our passion. We can look at different avenues and different people and for jobs and money to bring us the kindness that only God can bring to us. So in Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 11, God says this, he said, I even, I am the Lord, and beside me, he said, there is no Savior. He said, there's nobody else can save you but me. Now, don't get it wrong now. Even though our President Joe Biden and our Vice President Kamala Harris, all of them participated and make sure we get those stimulus checks, et cetera, et cetera, but God was behind. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Now, we thank God for a president. We thank God for rulers. We thank God for people. But God is behind everything that's good. Everything that's kind, God is behind. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Now, he says in his next verse, he said, I have declared and I have saved. And I have shown when there was no strange God among you. What he said, that when you won't go on running after this and run after that, he said, you knew that I was your God. He says that, now, therefore, you are my witnesses, said the Lord. He said, and you know that I am God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We know that he is God, and all good and all kindness come from God. Now, I'm going to tell you, you know, a lot of people say, well, um, have y'all doing the seven last words? Y'all doing the first six words and all these? Other? So we get all to the tradition so much that we forget. What is it that Jesus wants us really to enjoy? What is it that he wants? He, look, the death, the birth, and the resurrection, that's finished. I'm going to take care of it. He said, now, enjoy what I have given you, what I suffer for you to have. He said, I want you to be healed. I want you to walk in prosperity. I want you to walk in unity. I want you to walk in dominion over every adversary. He said, that's what I want you to walk. That's how we celebrate the blood that was shed for us. Yeah. 
Now we get the Adam glory at this time of the year. Lord, we thank you. Thank you. He said, yeah, but thank you. Use what I came to die for you to have. Use it. And use it to a place in your life that it shows the victory that I have given you. And he wants you to understand that there's no one else who can save you but me. Amen. No one right. else who can save you but me. I remember the time where I, I think the last time I went overseas, I went to, um, I went to Alabama. It's almost like going overseas. <laughs> but you know, I was in Haiti somewhere. There's a lot of turbulence. Now I was in Haiti. And there was a lot of turbulence. And then we got in the country, there was some, some, some violence or stuff happening. And I said, Lord, I said, I serve you. And I said, I risk my life serving you, Bible serving. He said, son, how can you risk your life serving me? <laughs> he said, when well, you serve me, there's no risk. Come on. Yeah. Even though all around you there might be danger, but when I'm with you, it's more than all the world is it against you. Yeah. And so we got to change our perspective, how we see our king of kings, how we see our Lord, our Lord, he is our what? Yeah. He's our savior. Yeah. Now, you don't have to be perfect, but he can make you perfect by your spirit. Yeah. You're going to make mistakes. Now, what about it? There is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Because you understand, I don't save you. I didn't come to save you, and you only get four shots at being saved. Then you mess up, you sin on the fifth one, and you no longer say, No, you understand? He said, There is no condemnation. I don't know what you think about, but that's kindness. Because yeah, yeah. yeah. we know you cross my line four times, I will unfriend you on Facebook. We done. <laughs> Come on, talk to me now. I'm not going to speak to you no more. I'm not going to click your like. I'm not going to put no comment. I ain't put no smiley face. No LL. I ain't going to do nothing. But Jesus said, listen, I hold nothing against you, but the only thing I have for you is kindness. Yeah. And you ought to thank God that we have a kind God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen, somebody. So Y'all got to turn loose today. Thank you. Now, John 5 and 39. John 5, 39. And after John 5, 39, we will go to uh, Ephesians 3, 19. And John 5, 39, he says, search the scriptures. He said, for in them you think you have eternal life. And they are they which do what? Testify of me. In other words, let me, let me change it up for you. He said, you pour over the scriptures because you presume that by them you possess eternal life. He said, these are the very words that testify about me. He said, and you refuse to come to me to have the life that you desire. To have the life that you say you want to live, that you really want to live. He said, I'm right here testifying with the scripture that I'm the one who give you good life. So I'm going to tell you, you can't read the word and exclude Jesus from the word because he is the word of God. Yeah. So that's a, that's a written part and that's a personal part according to our salvation. We have to look at to Jesus for all that he has done for us. He said that you're looking for happiness, you're looking for joy, you're looking for a husband, you're looking for a wife, you're looking for health, you're looking for healing, prosperity, get out of debt, all that. He said you're looking for it all in the scriptures, he said, but you won't look directly to me for it. He said, everything that you're looking for in life, he said, I want you to understand, I'm standing right here before you trying to give it to you. He said, but don't refuse it. Now, let me tell you one thing. Never chase out the money and replace it for God. I don't care if they give you a million dollars. Don't do it. You can't rewrite the Bible. Amen. You can't rewrite the scriptures. And God said, I have so much in store for you and everything that you're working for and everything that you're striving for, endeavoring for, or making confessions over or praying about, or what's about to agree with. He said, I'm standing right here before you. trying to give it to you. He said, I come that you might have life and that you have, might have it more abundantly. Amen. So when we go to this word of God, not just just look at the word of God, but get to the personal side of it. Jesus. Amen. Get to the personal side of it. Jesus. Amen. Amen. And when we get to the personal side of it, Jesus, you know how you're talking directly to him, not just making confessions out of the book. Amen. Take it out of the book and make it personal with him. God showed me some things. He said, son, anything that you need in life, he said, listen, just come directly to me for it. Ask for it. Don't just make confessions. Confession is just to line you up in a personal relationship, but we still got to deal with him person to person. Amen. Because when you realize that he humbled Gabriel's cross for us, and when he said that it was finished, that means that all the blessings that God mentioned to Abraham, even that Abraham then manifested his life, is now available. Somebody says available. available. It's available for you and I right now. 
So that means that sweating days are over. Well, I need a man. Now, you don't need a man. You need the man Jesus first. Come on, talk to me now, because you might pick the wrong man. Uh, uh, come on now, you might pick the wrong man. Now, Jesus knows you want to have a relationship, and he wants to give you the right relationship. So, therefore, when somebody comes into your life, you have discernment of the spirit of that relationship with that person that you so desire, et cetera, et cetera. So you don't have to compromise for something as they get into a struggle when you get into a relationship because you prosper at the speed of relationships. Yeah. Let church say amen. amen. So therefore, watch that everything that we would want or the avenues we take, Jesus said, I'm right here for you. I already made kindness available for you. Now I want you to live good. <coughs> now I'm going to tell you, there's some, there's some times in my life that I don't want to dress this way, I don't want to wear this jewelry. It's like I got a lot of jewelry stuff that I don't wear sometimes. God said, I gave you that, but you do. I, I, the scripture said, he said, I deck you out. Ain't that something? He said that, I think, in Isaiah or in Ezekiel, he said, I deck you out. He said, I put a ring in your nose. He said, I put a stud in your forehead. Amen. And God was, listen, you go through the scripture, you see the God would put diamonds in people's nose and, and put rings, even he was decking them out. And we have a problem when people look good. And I had a problem with wearing no expensive jewelry or no nice cologne. God said, I'm deck you out with somebody to give you a compliment. You let them know I gave it to you through my kindness. Yeah. Somebody say, God deck me out. Yeah. See, that gave God's glory, not to use crying in service. That when we walk in prosperity, the way that God had made it manifest through his son Jesus Christ, like watch, let me show you one is our prosperity. When people treat you like a dog when you dead, but you don't box back, that's prosperity. Because yeah, the love of Christ constrains you from behaving or acting like you used to behave. All right. That's prosperity. Yeah. And we thank God He gives us the ability not to act like a fool no longer. See, whenever you're distracted about something in life, you're not walking in prosperity. You're not walking in maturity of the spirit. Amen. You have to sit down at the table and talk about this person, that person, and how they treat you. You're missing out on the kindness of God. You're focusing on the rudeness of other people. Yeah. And God said, listen, I've been so kind and so good to you. Keep your focus and your passion towards me because my passion was towards you. Yeah. Tell, tell, tell God, say, I want it all. Want and he don't have a problem with us wanting it all. Because he made all things available for you and I. All things. Somebody say all things. Because we're going to glorify him. We're going to celebrate him because he's been so good to us. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So, so again, out of all the relationships and avenues and things we're looking for, everything we're looking for is looking directly every day through the kindness of Jesus. Amen. And Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 19. Because, you know, this time of year, the preachers, they won't go, yeah, they went down to the tomb, <laughs> but it was an empty grave. <laughs> and, you know, they we went, you know, that's good. But it's all to take care of. But where's the other part of the manifestations of What did he get up for? He already said, no man takes my life. He said, I lay it down, and I pick it back up again. But he's not doing it to show off. He did that for us. So he can give us the life, watch it now, that is abundant life. A life that no man can harm. A life that no disease can de destroy. That life. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with talking about the empty grave or the seven last words. There's nothing wrong with that. But where are we going to take it from there? Mm -hmm. Where are we going to take it from there? Yeah. Amen. When we see the sick, when we see the lame, we see those who, who are living in misfortune, what are we going to do from there? Yeah. Are we going to tell them God love them or are we going to be an extension of his kindness yeah. to that person? Yeah. But the only way they're going to believe our God is by seeing what God has done in our life and, and sharing it with their life. They'll believe in our God. Yeah. Amen. So you be, you be kind to a person who you believe in God, but the kindness watch this, of Jesus Christ is connected to what you do to somebody else. Yeah. 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 Ephesians 3, 19. Now, in 19, he said, and to know the love of Christ. You see, they said, know the love of Christ which passes knowledge and that we might be filled with all the fullness of God. He said, now to him that's able to do exceeding above, above all that we ask or think according to the power that there was, that working in us. Now, I want you to focus on this. When we know the love of Christ, all that he has done for us, all that he has done for us. Now, he doesn't go to, you know, he doesn't go to execution to the point, you know, okay, go in there and strap him down, you know, and just kill him. He had to go through a whole lot. First of all, he had to be betrayed by his own people. He had to be betrayed, misunderstood by his family. Yeah. Come on, talk to him. 
And then he was whipped and mocked in public. And they thought that they defeated him. And the Bible said his vicious was so marred that they didn't even recognize him. They tore him to pieces. He was like a look, he looked like walking hamburger meat. That's what he looked like. No skin on his body. Come on, talk to me now. And the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, walking through the streets with an old rugged cross on his back until one of the guys came and helped him take it up to the hill. And then once he gets to the cross, then they're going to nail him to the cross. Now, I'm not talking about the little nails you use in your house. I'm talking about the nails you use on the railroad. Amen. And they nail each nail each, into both his hands and to his feet. And they pierce him in the side. They spit on him, mock on him. But notice what the Bible said, but he set the joy before him. Yes. Yes. He saw that one day you and I was positioned to yes. like we are right now. He said, I'm going to be kind. I'm going to go through what I got to go through for them. Because they need my kindness. Yes. The only way they can walk in what I have in store for them is by me dying for their yes. sin. By me taking their place. And you mean to tell me we can't lift up our hands with our feet? You know, because my elbow hurt? We can't stand on our feet and I don't do what anybody do. How long will we be rude to this kindness? You can't say you believe in God that you don't celebrate. Come on. Amen. There's times I come from the restroom at night, 3 o'clock in the morning, God said, give me some praise. Yeah. My body said, jump in that bed. God said, give me some praise. Yeah. I give God some praise. Yeah. Amen. Because God is the one who's taking care of me. Yeah. I would not be rude to his yeah. kindness in my life. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And this is so vital. But what I want to see, see here, watch this now. He says, now to him that's able to do a season abundant above all. See, he wants to get to abundant above all things. Above all, since I can live above all. And I'm not waiting on nobody, no fame, nothing. I will believe and receive the love of Christ. It's to the point it made me shake my head. I asked him other day, I said, how can you love us so much? You know, sometimes people feel like committing suicide and feel like dying themselves. They're tired of themselves. But God said, I love you beyond that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I shake my head. I said, how, how can you love us so much? No, he said, because I am. He said, because I am love. He said, I can't do it but do it. I can't do it but do it because I am love. Yes, yes. But it shakes, it shakes me to the point how he can love us so much. Mm -hmm. See, not only did he forgive us of our sins that we manifested, but he also cleanses us and forgives us from iniquity. Yes. The thinking about doing yes. Yes. So even when you think about hurting somebody or hurting yourself or doing something wrong, God said, I'll wipe that judgment against you away from you. He said, I blotted away from you. You gotta say that's kindness. Yeah. The Bible said that he's so kind to us, he ought to be feared, he ought to be reverenced. Yeah. And nobody yeah. can do as good like Jesus. Amen. No, they say in the church, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody yeah. do me like love. That's the truth. Can't nobody, can't nobody. do like Jesus. That's right. Nobody. nobody. Amen. Amen. Nobody. Amen. You know, we was, you know, we was, my wife and I we was making investments and sowing and blessing people and doing all this. And one of the bank accounts, our operation account, that thing went down to a hundred some dollars. I said, I ain't never seen that. I said, I ain't never seen that in a long time. I see my bank account go to a hundred some dollars. I said, God, but I thank you. And I had some money in other places and everything. I want to move when God tell me to move. When invest when God tell me to invest, I'm going to give when God tell me to give. Those things I'm going to do. And then, oh, and out of the blue, big money came in. I said, Lord, I praise him all night long. I said, see, it was not the money, it was the timing. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I don't think you understand what I'm saying. It was not the amount of the money, it was the timing. Yeah. Yeah. So he knew yeah. on that day I would have 180 some dollars in the operational account, not the other account, but just that account. And he waited till that time happened right there, and he made that big yeah. money come yeah. in. Yeah. It's not the big money, it's that he was mindful. Yeah. Yeah. He was paying attention to me with his timing. See, anytime somebody do something and it's something you need at that time, because he knows the time to help you, he be kind too. So he wants you to have a passion to his kindness, because his kindness is a passion towards you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll never be without. Yeah. Never be without. Yeah. Now we had surplus and all the accounts and everything. I said, I still want to do it because I got to know how you got to know how to serve God on empty to be filled by yeah. God. Yeah. I'm not gonna let money or balance control my action or kindness. Amen. I ain't gonna let that happen. I want to see him experience all that God has in store for him. If you don't be kind with money is concerned, you're missing out. Yeah. Be kind to people with money is concerned. 
Amen. Praise the Lord. Now let's go to 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. In verse 3, he says, According as his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and God is through the knowledge of him. And the knowledge of him, we got to get understanding of him who is called glory and virtue, whereby is given to us exceeding great and precious promises. We partake of the divine nature, have escaped corruption that will operate in this world through desires. Now, God has no problem with us desiring something, but he wants to desire according to his will. Amen. Jesus is fun. He's fun. Jesus, he loves. He, 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 he likes it. He likes to hang out at coffee cafes. He likes Frappuccino. He said, you like that Frappuccino? You want some more? You want some extra drizzle? He, like, he, like, he loves it when we are enjoying life and then make life a joy, enjoyable for other people. It's not just, I go home, I pray, I, wait, I do this thing. Oh, see, there's no more annals in the church no more. That was for a time to usher the Lord into this present world. Amen. That portion is old. You can pray and pray and pray. Nothing wrong with that. I believe in prayer. Prayer is vital. Yeah. But that's how you receive wisdom, revelation, and relationship with God. But there's a time we have to live out what Jesus died for us. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Some of us, we work too hard. We work too long. You're struggling to meet means that Jesus already met. He already taken care of that. You worry too much. Yeah, we can't control everything. Amen. Just enjoy life. Understand that Jesus has already taken care of everything that pertains to you. Yeah. Say, Jesus has, Jesus has, through his kindness, already, already taken care, care of everything that concerns me. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, now, let's go over here to Galatians chapter 1. Galatians 1 and verse 4. Galatians 1 and 4. And in verse 4, he's talking, he's mentioned, who gave himself for our sins that we might deliver us from this present evil world. In other words, he delivered us from the evil that is present in this world. So therefore, if we're born again, and he's forgiven us of our sins, we, we now are delivered from the present evil that's in this world. We're delivered from that. Yeah. Now, I don't say we don't do six feet apart, we don't do caution, no, we deliver. I ain't talking about the coronavirus. I'm not talking about that because there's other things in this world, the woes in this world is more devastating than coronavirus. Amen. Like cancer, violence, and then you see they're trying to kill all the Asian people right now. All these things are going on. God's protected from all these things. You never knew what day of, of evil was present with you, but knowing God said had a mock on your life. <laughs> and evil said we can't touch that person. Yeah, yeah, Why? Because we deliver. We say salvation doesn't mean you're just only going to heaven. Salvation means I'm protected from anything in the earth and try to harm you before I even get there. Yeah. That's what salvation is. So nothing can touch you or take over your life unless you allow it through your thinking and through your confession. Amen. And that's why the Bible says this. He said, David said, he said, I would have fainted if I didn't choose to believe to see. Somebody said to see. To see. to see the goodness of the Lord in the what? In the land of the living. See, you got to say, God is good to us. David said this, I was going through so much in life that I would have fainted if I didn't choose to receive good from God. And sometimes you can't find good or kindness from nobody else in the earth, but you always can find it from God. Yes. Family will turn their backs on you. Um, bosses will try to fire you. You should be working on a job and you don't know what they're trying to get rid of you. You should be working on a job you're not comfortable at. And they demanding all your time and controlling all your activities. You can't do this. You can't do that. You can't. You can't. You, can't, oh, you got to get somebody to come. You just to go to the bathroom. And how God? No, that's not how God wants you to live life. There's no kindness like His in the earth. Yeah. So He said, when there's no when there's no kind treatment towards you, He said, always look to me because I am your kindness. Yeah. He said, I love doing you right because that's why He died on Calvary's cross for us. Amen. Yeah. Jeremiah 9.23. Jeremiah 9.23. Aren't you glad he saved us from the evil that's present in this world right now? Amen. 
Now, I want you to see this. Now, watch this. He said, Thus said the Lord. He said, Let not the wise man boast of glory in his wisdom. He said, Neither let the mighty man glory in his might. He said, Don't let the rich man glory in all his riches. Verse 24. He said, Don't boast in this. Don't boast in your knowledge. Of God. He said, But if you're going to boast, if you're going to brag, if you're going to celebrate, he said, But let him glory. Let, but let him in glory, glory in this, that he understand it and know it me. Yeah. Yeah. You follow me? Yeah. He said, if you're going to boast in anything, boast in this, that my God will not cause me to fail. Yeah. My God will be to live on the high and not yeah. on the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. My God will bring me through and not leave me in it. Yeah. Listen to me, he said, no matter what goes in life, he said, glory in this that I understand and I know God and that he is the Lord, which what? Yeah. He does what? Yeah. What word I'm looking for? Yeah. That's what I'm looking for. He exercises yeah. loving kindness. Yeah. Not just kindness, yeah. but loving kindness. Yeah. Look at that. When he said he exercises, it means that he's proficient. Yeah. Yeah. He's skillful. Yeah. Yes, he, is. he knows how to Love us with his kindness. Yeah. And I want you that. So when you want to exercise something, that means you practice it, you do it, you yeah. do it, do it. God said, I've been doing it because this is who I am. Yeah. He said, I want that I want you to understand and know me. If sickness comes on your life, I'm not trying to teach you a lesson. If your tie gets flat, watch that all things are going to work together for your good. I'm not trying to teach you a lesson. All I do is exercise. Loving kindness towards us. He said, I want you to understand this and I want you to know this right well. And once you understand, you know that, you can raise that child being a single parent. Come on, talk to me now. You can have a good sleep tonight. You don't have to worry about this and worry about that because God is flexing his muscles of kindness towards us. Right, thank you, Lord. He wants to be good to us. He is good to us. See, see, some of you have this problem. You see, you see a nice car go down the street. You say, ooh, I like that car. And you say, no, I say, I like that car. You think there's something wrong with you. One thing, God said, no, that's my kindness. I'm showing you what I can do for you. Yeah. Amen. So he don't want you to keep going there and talk to no and get a car when you're paying 39% interest rate. God said, I got some good for you. But God, you understand? He said, my credit is not good. He said, but my credit is good. He said, I got favor and my loving kindness is there waiting for you at the Mercedes lot. See, some of you can't reach that. I can't do it because you, your life is trapped in how much money you make. You're in the budget realm. God said, listen, get into my eternal blessed realm. He said, I put the desire in your heart, and my loving kindness will meet you at the deal that you're going to get there. But now I got to save more money. I got to put, God said, go on there. You don't know what happens unless you go. Yeah, that's right. Y'all better listen to because God wants you to drive nice. He wants you to dress nice. He wants you to smell nice, and he wants you to be nice. All right. So even though you drive a nice Mercedes, you still can pick up a homeless person. Come on. Mm -hmm. Come on, talk to me now. Listen to me. Listen to me very carefully. God exercises loving kindness. He exercises loving kindness. He's good to us. He sent Jesus to die for our sins. Who will die for your sins? Only Jesus. Thank you. Who will, tell me, tell me. Name one person you know who will die for your sins. Even look at the Bible, other than Jesus, nobody else in even the Bible who will be able to die for us, they'll be willing to do it. Yeah. And if they did choose to do it, they're still not qualified. That's right. Come on. Come on. Come on. You better listen to me. Because right. watch, that blood was shed for us so that you and I can have a blood covenant right to all the goodness of God. Yeah. The tangible of Abraham and the intangible of Christ Jesus. As a friend of another country, they'll say, listen, I got to pay this at a certain amount of money for a certain cause for my family at a certain time of the month, each month, et cetera, et cetera. I say, this is what you do. I say, you open up your mouth and you make a decree and you declare God's goodness and your covenant right. Yes. Somebody say covenant right. Covenant right. I said, they, they don't say, I said, you have a right to be saved. As you tithe, as you sow, you do the works of God, you have a right to declare and call those things that be not as though they were. Right. Amen. I'm in a town where was a half a million dollars in debt. Somebody said half a million. And God trained me for nine months to get out of half a million dollars in debt. It's like $475,000. That's still a half a million to me. I don't care what that is. It is a million. Amen. That was like five million to me at the time. I said, I said, we can't do this. God said, I can't. 
I said, God, do it. God said, dance. I said, no, no, God, give me a check. God said, dance. He said, because you're too nervous, you're a wreck right now. Ain't nothing going to help you line over me right now until you start getting some praise. Yeah. 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 praise. That's right. So I danced right in my underwear <laughs> in the house early in the morning, dancing. And God said, dancing. He said, look up hands and tell me that you love me. Tell me that you trust me. He, yeah. said, he, yeah. he said, he just don't make it. He ain't going to cause it to happen. We got to get into unity. Yeah. Because right. it got to be according to my faith. Yeah. Amen. So he had to train me, he had to train me. I had to read this book, and I had to do it, come and come of different people and all this thing. And then in that ninth month, it was gone. I can't even reckon how it all happened, but I know it happened. I ain't gonna go back and try to find it, I know that much. Amen. And I'm gonna tell you, child, God, you are wasting out on good if you don't spend time in prison, won't get treated good. Yes, that's right. Can't no man do you like Jesus can do. Can't no woman do you like Jesus can do. Can no business do you like Jesus can do? I get business opportunity all the time. Jesus said, take this one, don't take that one. He said, Master, these two need to rest alone. And these two right here will take up all the other ones to come your way. He said, I'll be with you over here. See, don't panic in life because God got you back. He would not allow his son to die on Calvary's cross, but you and I to live in panic and cannot handle life. You have everything you need for this life and to live a righteous life. You have everything you need, yeah. but you have to be in a good Bible teaching church yeah. and where there's some fruits and manifestations of it. Yeah. 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 I ain't talking about inspiration, I'm talking about manifestations. Yeah. Whether you feel it or not, you still get working because you got the tools to work, you got the wisdom, you got the, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of fear of the Lord that you don't judge out your eyes or prove out the hearing of your ears and then watch it now, and that you can walk in the wisdom of God. Because God is good to us. Yes. Amen. Yes. And that's why I said, I said to us about the next house. I'm not going to, I walk in Macy's or what's that place called Dillard's. I said, I want this in my, that's, this is going to my bedroom. I'm going to have a bedroom just for shoes, a bedroom just for ties. It's going to be set up just like Macy's and all this stuff, just like that. <laughs> right. I got to stay organized. Yes. I can't be flipping away my black socks, wear this and this and stuff. Oh, I can't, I can't, I got to be organized. And then so therefore, when somebody come into Mama Lister's um, house and see all the glory that God has manifested, like they say, Lord, child, where you, you got all your stimulus check one time. No, I said, Jesus, my stimulus yeah. name. What are you talking about? Yeah. Jesus stimulated this for me. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus gave this to me. He's kind to me. Amen. He wants me to live good. So therefore, some sugar dad tried to come and try to get me something. I already got everything I need before he get here. So I don't have to squat. I don't have to reduce my, my, my character to get some sugar. Come on, come on. Go, go, go. Skip the sugar part. <laughs> <laughs> I you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. If you don't have Jesus at your forefront, you will always have to compromise and get good in your life. Amen. 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 And I just had something happen the other day. The opportunity happened for me over in the UK. I said, God, this is so awesome that they include me into this group. I said, God, thank you. God calls me to point all the way across the waters, yeah. 